Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Seeing that we've got the wings completed, let's finish up this build by getting to work on the tail. Hey everyone, before we begin, this is Bud from two weeks, two weeks in the future. Yeah, it's been, it's been a long two weeks too. Um, what I want to do is, uh, before we get going here, I want to throw down a shout out to the people that helped me get some product in because uh, with the way the whole economy and the, and the market's, you know, on the downside, um, I, had a, I had three people uh, pretty much really step up just to give me a little bit of a hand. So let me go ahead and show you what I got. All right, this is the hardware that I was talking about getting. And uh, I've got the first two sitting up here. The first one was from Mike at Gator RC. Uh, he's local, he's, he's very, matter of fact, he's so close that he says that uh, he's just a few miles away, which I know, he's down in Algonquin. So if I need something big, I could just uh, give him a call and stop in. So one of these days, Mike, I'm gonna meet you. Uh, we actually have a mutual friends uh, with the Kellners for the B-17, uh, the restoration. So if you guys haven't seen that video, go see that video. The next one is the one that's that way, about nine-tenths of a mile from my house, is Motion RC. And because um, they've really downsized their staff because of what we've got going on out there, um, it just took a while. This was ordered the day before or the day after uh, from uh, Gator. And it took a good week plus, and that's because when it was picked up by our postal service, it went down to the Chicago hub, which they normally sit there for about a week before they get it back out to your house. So the stuff that I got from them was the, uh, the T-style uh, control horns, which I may not use. These have the diagonal holes drilled into it, and I can possibly get away with that. I'll, I'll make sure when I get to the tail of the airplane but I did, dig, I did dig these up out of a stash I had upstairs, which is more likely what I was looking for um, with the spacing between the holes because I can go ahead and jump across the, uh, and you'll see later on in this video, um, across the steel, the, the piano wire that goes uh, across the, uh, from side to side on the elevator. So these may be what I'm gonna use, but we'll figure that out in the future. All right, the next one, the next shout out goes to Gino up at Trimcraft Aviation. I've been friends with Gino for probably well over a decade, decade and a half. Um, and he actually owns a company called Trimcraft Aviation. And that description and his website will be in the description below because from him, you can actually get fasteners for RC. And he's got a lot of them. Uh, great prices, really quick shipping too on that one. But anyway, I wanted to get some more nitrate dope because I've got very little left and not enough when I'm covering this plane. So what I did was uh, one day prior, I called up because you know the crunch we're in to see if he would be able to get hold of the people up at Wag Arrow, which is probably about a half hour or so from, uh, from his place of business. And I believe he used to work for them years and years ago um, to see if he could get this stuff dropped off at his uh, location of business. And what he ended up doing is he called me up the very next morning and said he's heading up to Trimcraft to pick this up so I ran up to his house, uh, probably about noonish, noon o'clock-ish uh, on that day, and it was all there. So Gino, I thank you very kindly for going out of your way to go ahead and make sure that, uh, that I had access to this. So, so anyway, once again, down below description, Trimcraft Aviation, and I'll have Gator uh, RC down in the description as well. All right, and then uh, Sig, I wanted to get some more coverall. So I went ahead and put this order in. It didn't take too long. It took about a week for it to show up. So, and that was no big deal. I probably have enough. I've got, uh, from what was left over on the, uh, the big Taylor craft, I think I have enough. Um, but it's better to have some extra, you know, just in case, because I don't know what's gonna happen with shipping. So this was order up, I got that. So I'm good to go on the fabric now too. Now, for the piece de resistance, when I was taking the wing off, these are the little connection points for the interplane struts. And when I was taking one off, one of them snapped. 
and we're talking about plastic that's probably 20 plus years old so and we know how much plastics don't have a very long lifespan uh, especially with the polymers when they start breaking down so what i did was uh, i sent a uh, email to a good friend of mine greg Camus, uh, to find out if he had any uh, t-stock aluminum because if he had any t-stock in his in his shop um, or where I can get it from, I just get some tea stock, come in and just cut it out and just make my own. Cause that would be really easy just to have some pretty much, you know, 60, 80 thousandths, uh, probably, yeah, you could probably get away with 60 thousandths aluminum, but even 80 thousandths aluminum, if I could find something to do it. So what he did was he asked me to go ahead and send him up drawings with some sizes on it. It's from my couple years of experience, uh, working in a machine shop. Um, I drew them up. And that's what they look like. And what he did is a couple hours later, I get an email back with this picture attached to the email and said, how many do you need? And I said, eight. A couple days later, they showed up. Let me show you what they are. All right, what he did is he wrote a program for his CNC and then machined them out of billet aluminum. And so Greg, once again, I owe you, man. So that's why it's great to always be part of a community of friends where there's always people around that are willing to help others out. If people have an issue with a plane or they need a problem with a repair, uh, they're always welcome to stop by. I, I've, I'll always help people out. And uh, in, in kind, uh, there's other people out there that'll do the same for me. All right, so everyone, let's get back to the video. All right, as you guys can see, those wings are on. I do have the aileron connection rods, both left and right. They are done, and it was uh, it was it was interesting because the little the little clevis pins. Uh, I was one shy of what I needed, um, and because it was just going to be a real pain in the butt to get the uh, to get some order to go pick some up. I just decided to take the the ones that were in the golden rod kit and put them in the wings because they're they're golden and that's going to work better with the yellow anyway so i'll just uh, order up a set of uh the same color golden ones <clears throat> excuse me um and have those in so that way when it comes time to hook up the tail um i'll have those here and everything should just look peachy so let me go ahead and get the wings taken off and uh i'll show you exactly what i'm gonna have to do to the tail all right, so where we're going to start is things that we're going to do with the horizontal stabilizer and the elevator. And the one thing is, is I have this all drawn on here just so that you can see it because I really see it from the front. It's, it's where the hinges are going through. I only need to see this. I drew everything up on top just for you guys and the camera because I care. So anyway, all right, these, these, little, these little backers, this one here is going to be set up for this is where the, the hinges go through and if you guys have never used robarts they're awesome little hinges to, to use to get set up just don't set them up with if you set them up with five minute epoxy you better be quick normally i go with 15 minute epoxy or 30 minute just to make sure that you've got enough working time to get everything properly lined up because if you get one of these things say that say that this here i'll even do it this way say that this was straight in and all of a sudden you glued it in it was like that you've got a mess so it's just they're great hinges I never had one fail you just got to take the time to set it up right so the reason why this one here is so long because this little dot right here is where the cable is going to come through the uh, elevator excuse me the uh, horizontal stabilizer so the cable is going to come from here up to here which isn't here it's right over there so for the for the fin on the rudder, it's gonna come right about up here on the fin. That's where this mark is right here. So I wanna have something where, because this is gonna have cables going through it and it, it is gonna take the load off. You still want it relatively strong. So this one, I wanna back it up because it's gonna probably move this one a little bit farther forward. And this one, I'll probably try to move this one a little farther forward as well. So that's why this piece here will get glued in right here, just so that way you've got a little bit of a little bit of a buffer where I can put this hole closer to the edge here, 
plus at the same time just add a little more meat for the uh, when the uh, the hinge goes through so that's how I'm gonna set that up now when it comes over here to the uh, rudder I'm gonna have the one piece up on the top here I'm not concerned too much about this because even though it's it's three eighths balsa this is a half inch across the way I cut it so I think I'm gonna have enough just for the one two three and this one here on this side is actually coming into the base so I don't I should not have an issue with this at all if I do decide to make them it's easy for me to cut those out all right now coming back to the horizontal save for the uh, excuse me for the elevator I glued these little pieces in and don't pay attention to the grain direction because people are going to say it should have been 45 degree angle I'm not that concerned about that what's going to happen here is and it took me a while to find it and it's old but it's still going to work i wanted to go with 330 seconds wire um because on the original ones let me find it on the original one they used hardwood they used a piece of hardwood back here and i decided i didn't want to use the hardwood um so just to save a little bit of weight so i'm just going to go ahead and i'll bend a little a little u shape that's going to come across and then back down so this is just made to sink on the inside of this one. Now, my main goal, and I can't find them, I'd like to use a, this This is giant scale, but this is just to give you an idea. Um, I'd like to use an, an elevator uh, servo horn, servo horn, just an elevator control horn. So that way I can have it straddle the top of this wire. So say that this wire was coming through and out over the top, this, could sit over the top of it and lock everything in so that's way too big it's not what I'm going to use but I know I've got some somewhere else around here I just got to locate them so that's pretty much how this is gonna go down now let me go ahead and clear this off and show you the next problem all right the next problem wheels the rear tail wheel this is the one they give you in the kit I mean it's a really nice tail wheel it's too big i mean in relationship to the front tires this is too big it's that's scale wise it's not even close these are big for the front but i don't have mind having a problem with a bigger front wheel it's just that this one sitting under here is way too big that's that's like if you almost look at scale size that's closer to the scale size of a real one that was up front so this even with the weight of it that i might need back there I, i'm not going to use it now my options are this it's the same size it's made out of foam so what I can do is I can put this thing um, on a rod spin it up take it over to the sander and just start sanding this thing down so I can have this thing nice and small now if I was going to have it small enough it would be a it would be a tiny little tire on a great big rim so that kind of pushes that off to the side too so then it comes down to the final three do I want to take this nice little Dubro soft foam rubber one, which is a really nice one, and it's probably what I'm gonna do. And I can go ahead and use that one. And you can see the size difference in the tires. So let me see if I can get the edges lined up. So yeah, you're taking quite a bit off the size. So that's a good possibility, and that's gonna be closer to what we can use in the back. Still possibly a little too big, but with our field, um it's bouncing and some of the grass gets a little tall from time to time so you don't really want to go too too light or too small of a uh of a rear tail wheel in deep grass now the, the last and final option is this here's another foamy very light i could probably use it you know it's just that it's although that to me would be about the perfect size it's a little bit too light duty I could still use it I mean I've got plenty of those things upstairs this would be the this would be the hot setup to use this one but this is a very old tire and you can see it's already this the sidewalls are all dried out so if I can locate something of this size I may just go ahead and go with something about that size because I think that would possibly work so but as for right now we're going with the do row with this a possible option if I can find another one of that size I mean I'm sure I can drive over to Dubrokes or you know a mile and a half from where I work and if they still make this size I can get that size 
All right, so that's the tire conundrum. Now, here's where it's gonna get really interesting. Okay, now, I'm hoping that this is gonna work because I don't know if the other camera decided it wanted to shut down. If we can see, and I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see it, with the tail wheel where it originally hooks up on this one, this is how they break it down on the tail section. So that's why I left this piece short. So this can come on up and then pivot off here. Now the way, if you can just take a mental note on that. All right, so as we come back here, the way this would be mounted would be mounted like this and then come out. Now the thing is, as nice as this looks, it would actually need to have this little top piece right here would probably have to be about an inch longer than that because when we get this part put on when this gets put on I'll see how well I can balance it here and then the rudder gets kicked on you can see how far back that's gonna move that so where this one was see how well I could do this with my fingers here where this one came out right about here you've got about a one inch to come through this one and that's going to have to go ahead and pivot this back and forth so the thing is I just don't know how well that's going to work but that needs to be getting built in as I uh as I'm attaching all the stuff that's why none of those hinge points are going to be glued on a tail um, none of the hinges will be glued in until because the way I'm going to do it I'm going to have the horizontal stabilizer because it's already mounted I'm going to mount the fin the vertical um, and go ahead and cover those first then I'll cover the elevator and the rudder second because then once I slide the elevator in um, then I can slide the rudder in and have everything glued down and that's going to be the best way to do it i mean it's i can i can try to do it a different way i had to do it a different way on the uh, uh taylor craft to a certain extent and that was a real pain in the butt so i'm kind of thinking that that's going to be the best way to, and the smartest way to do it so let me get things rolling and uh we'll just see how things go